The Joy of Programming. This week's episode, Painting with Richard Vanderwend. So I thought maybe we could write a program together. What do you think about that? <clears throat> you know, I've, I've never even had, like, the, even, like, the most rudimentary introduction as as to what programming actually is even, so. <laughs> oh. um well it is a sequence of instructions that tell a computer to do things um is your so you can see my screen is it a uh, full screen can you like read the text and stuff oh let me see if I yeah there we go all right good 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 okay so you can see this thing I'm doing here yeah okay so I'm gonna write an app it's actually gonna be an iPhone app so that you can you know you'll now know how to write iPhone apps uh, and I'm gonna call it painter because it's gonna be a painter app in tribute to Bob Ross there's already a, a, you know, an app called Painter. Um, yeah, I know. I, I'm, I, I'm aware of that. My, my problem with the Painter app, though, is that it's actually not a painter, right? Because if you turn it on and you just watch it, it doesn't do anything. Whereas uh -huh. if you had a painter, he would paint, Okay. Right? So That's that good... it's not a painter app at all. And my app is going to be a painter app. In fact, I should really call it Bob Ross, but yeah. I, I think he might sue me. So we're just going <laughs> to we're going to we're going to not do that. Okay. Now I got to do a bunch of dumb stuff. Uh, that I'm going to do really quickly that maybe I should like not do in my show because it is just so tedious and not interesting. Uh, but it is a part of programming. So, you know, yeah, gonna, I think that's I'm still include it. probably good idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I call it uh, boilerplate. What I'm doing is I'm creating what's uh, called a view views are these little boxes that do things uh, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so I'm gonna create a box that is a painter and I'm going a, to a box in what a box on the iPhone screen okay okay so it's gonna be an app you're gonna click on it it'll pop up it'll say uh, here you can see the screen, right? It'll yeah. say uh, launch screen. So I click over here and it's going to say, here, let me close this so we have more space. It's going to say painter, copyright, Carl Stiefvater, or it's reserved. And then it's going to pop up this box, which won't have edges, so it won't look like a box, but inside it really is a box. And that is where our painter is going to live. And he is a painter view. And he is a painter view, which is allocated and knitted with a rec with a frame. Yeah. Uh, self dot uh, view dot bounds. So we're gonna make him the same size as our app, and then we're gonna add him to our app. Uh, add sub view. Okay, so that's kind of tedious, but that part is done. <sighs> ba, 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 ba. What should we do next? Um, get rid of this. He needs uh, an init block. Okay. So painter view. So right now this is going to be code, which again is just instructions for uh, telling the phone what to do. 
Uh, this is going to be a little bit of code that gets called anytime our painter view is created. So when he starts up. Okay. Um, and, it with frame. and when he gets started up, he gets told how big his box should be. And that's what the, that frame is. And super and with frame, frame. Yes. Uh, if self. So we do a bunch of this tediousness. Turn. So, so, so you, uh, you, this is Xcode. What is Xcode? Um, Xcode is the app, uh, the application that uh, programmers of iPhones uh, or Macintosh applications use to write their programs. It's okay. created by Apple. It's uh, like over on the left, you can see all of these things are files. Um, right now, I'm working on the Painter View one. But there are all kinds of other ones too. What's the dot M versus the dot H? <laughs> wow, you're kind of hardcore, dude. Well, I'm just right. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. fine. No, cool, cool. Uh, it takes two files to uh, define a class. One is called the interface, which is the stuff that people who are using your code uh, need to know about. Uh, the other one contains stuff that the people who are writing the code need to know about. It actually contains the code. Um, uh, in fact, I'll put... It's kind of a... I wouldn't worry about the distinction. So that last uh, game that you created oh, was yeah. in something else, though. Yes, yes. That was in a development system called Unity. Uh, which um, is mostly for 3D projects um, and games. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cool. Um, it's cool because when you write stuff in Unity, then you click a button and it automatically ports it to an iPhone or a Macintosh or a Windows box or an Android's phone or a million different things. So it's it's a it's a very nice uh, and it has those other like uh, physics engines already yes yes it apple. has lots of code in it now uh the iphone apple stuff has a physics engine they they well they have a toolkit for physics engines um uh two um so i could have written it over there But I chose. I want to. Uh, I also want to like jump around to different development systems. So mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there's this. You get a broad uh, UI image view. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, oops. <laughs> okay, so more tediousness. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm creating a canvas onto which our painter will paint. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Yeah, because what else, you know, what else is he going to paint on? Uh, Alloc, it with frame. Okay, let's hang on a second while the people outside, can you hear them? No. Okay. Uh, people outside my office. Okay, so... Uh, well, is it a riot? I, I think it probably is, um, but, uh, oh, look, I made a spelling mistake. The code, see, isn't this nice? This little thing fixes my spelling mistakes. Um, that's a view, canvas view. No, uh, there haven't been many riots recently. There was a protest march. Oh, yesterday. It, all, it all moved to Baltimore, yeah? R well, I mean, there was a protest uh, uh, in support of Baltimore uh, yesterday. Uh, but no, not so much in the way of writing. But no, no cars were burned or anything. No, no. Uh, well, maybe a couple, but not a lot. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write a routine, a procedure called paint. Um, 
it is going to be a procedure for painting, if if that makes any sense to you. Does that make any sense to you? <laughs> does this, does this, no. does this all make any sense to you? No. Really? No. I'm sorry. Well, painting is when a person takes some kind of, uh, it's usually a liquid with some kind of pigment in it to give it a color, and then they put it on something in an artistic way to create something. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that's what this is going to do is I am going to give the computer instructions for how to paint. Does that sound good? Mm. Does that sound good? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever written a program to be a painter before? No. Have you ever written a program at all? No. I think you sat with me while I wrote some code once. I have a pleasant memory of that. How would I have known? Because <laughs> uh, I was typing stuff like this. Uh, well, you're always typing stuff like that. Right? <laughs> but not while you're sitting with me, keeping me company. Um, so this is yet more boilerplate. What what do you what's the term boilerplate? Oh, uh, it's actually not a programming term. It's a oh. lawyers use it. Uh, lawyers do the same stuff over and over and over again, so they have pre-made forms uh, for doing it. And there's like nothing. There's nothing even remotely creative about it. You're just like dumping stuff in. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, oh, I need this paragraph about blah, blah, blah. And, oh, I need this paragraph about blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, boilerplate. Uh, so, I'm trying to go through that as fast as I possibly can, and I'm almost entirely done. Although, there's going to be a little bit more later on. Okay. All right. All the boilerplate is done. Um, canvas view equals this image. So I'll tell you what this does. Uh, we've got this little block of code here and at the top it says paint and what it does is it creates an image it draws some stuff although it's not doing anything yet and then it creates an image of it and puts it on the canvas and at this point we can run our app and see what it looks like. Uh, we're gonna run it in the phone simulator so that it shows up on my screen so you can see it. Here's the iPhone simulator and there's the painter splash screen as it loads and there is our canvas. That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, come I, on. The I first download that for free. The first step <laughs> in painting is to get a canvas and here is a canvas so I mean this is so far the, the perfect painter right <laughs> so far yeah I mean you can't argue with that right up until now did you used to teach an art class I, I did for a short yeah yeah so yeah. up until now what kind of grade would you give our painter <laughs> right he's created his can he's got a canvas you gonna fault him for this canvas well i mean the the, the canvas looks a lot like the <laughs> what the rest of the screen except the rest of the screen has a code on it <laughs> well see it wouldn't be if one of your students came to class with a canvas covered in code, you know, that would that would be a problem. You might you might flunk that one, that that student, right? Is going to paint? I don't know. Paint. I wouldn't be able to evaluate the code. Well, no, you're not evaluating the code. You're evaluating his paint <laughs> painting skills. As a painter, if he shows up with a canvas that is covered with computer code, that is a computer screen. 
you'd be like, no, you can't paint on the computer screen. It has to have, like, texture and... Okay. Did you see what I typed here? Okay. Can you see... Can you... Do you have a guess as to where I'm going with this? No. <laughs> yeah, do you see what's highlighted right now? Yeah. What, what is that word? <laughs> can, can you read that? I don't know. It's a it's a compound word. Right, right. It's like the German words, right? When they run all their words together, they get, <laughs> they get words that are like, you know, 27 words long. Like this one down here is like that too. Uh, so, uh, well, well, you're German, right? <laughs> um, no, no, I'm an American. Uh, okay, so uh, our painter is taking out the red paint. And um, he's uh, he's taking out his Bezier toolkit. Do you remember what a Bezier is? Bezier path? Sort of. Yeah. Uh, and then what do I want to say here? Uh, I should have. See, I should have. I should have probably rehearsed this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is a rehearsal. <clears throat> CG Rect make uh, 100, 100, 100, 100. Okay, so we got some numbers now. Uh, circle path film? Is that what I want to call? Yeah, all right. Okay, cool. Is that right? Okay. You want to run this code? Let's run this code. Do you have any guesses as to what's going to happen here? <laughs> I don't know, something with a red circle. Ah, awesome. Check it out. <laughs> what do you think? Nice. It's pretty good, huh? It's very it's pretty, Japanese. It's pretty pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> if if this were like a Japanese painting class, you might you might be tempted to give to give our our artificially intelligent painter I mean like a really good grade, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you? For real? <laughs> so what are the four numbers? The four, <laughs> four um, 100s. Right. So we're making a circle. Uh, it's actually an oval. Uh, in this rectangle, which is specified by these coordinates. So uh, at coordinate 100 comma 100 on a graph. Does that make sense? Uh, like pixel, 100 pixels over and 100 pixels down. Create an oval that is 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. Uh. So the oval is going to be a circle because it's the same size right and left, or up and down as right and left. And then it's 100 pixels in and 100 pixels down. Um... Yeah, that's pretty good, huh? <laughs> that's pretty good. I mean, come on. That's, that's it's not your best work, I have to say, but it's it's pretty good. Okay, okay. Uh, top uh, left left equals arc random uniform. All right, you're going to like this. Arc for random. Okay, so my grouse, I have a problem with our painter. Uh, and that is, he so far is not being creative at all. He's doing exactly what I've told him to do, right? Um, and he is doing, he's making no decisions on his own. Okay, um, I think a part of the uh, painting process is this element of creativity. So he he needs he needs. I mean, would you agree? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's like a it's a theory I've been developing. Um, 
uh, there's more to it, uh, but let, let's 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 stick with this right now. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to let him make a decision on his own, and I'm going to do that with this randomizer, this random number function. I'm going to let him choose the left position and the top position of our circle. Ha <laughs> ha Look at that! Isn't that good? <laughs> That's awesome, huh? It's like it's baby steps, right? He just put it there. Here, let's run it again. Let's run it again. Oh, he put it over on the side. Okay, that's too far over. Now, so what <laughs> I'm doing is uh, I'm letting him pick a number that is that goes between zero and the full width of the screen. Nice. Uh, but what he's doing now is he's drawing it off the sides. So I'm going to subtract 100. But it's not, uh, wouldn't it be, it's not centered on the edge of the screen. No, no. Well, it's, its position is chosen randomly. Uh, so, you know, it's wherever he decided to put it. But uh, the position is the, the center of the circle? Oh, uh, no, no, no. The position is the upper left-hand corner of the circle. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So that would stay on the screen. But now nice. we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract back 100 so that it always stays entirely on the screen. Okay. Um, let's see if he, get, he keeps it on the screen. Ooh. That looks exactly like he did the first time we ran it. Maybe he's not being creative anymore. Well, no, he there he is. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. That's not bad. That's not bad. All right. Int, uh, no, 4. Int i equals 0. I less than. Now, with your wide experience in computer programming, can you do you have a guess as to what this does? Or can you guess what I would do next? <laughs> ah. Yeah. Ten circles. It with Form. <sighs> sure, 100 int height equals arc 400. And 100. And then subtract off width and height. Okay. What do you think is going to happen now? Any ideas? For real? No? <laughs> Are you going to. You're going to squash the circles? I'm going to let him pick again. He's going to pick the size of the circles. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the width and the height. And see, look at this. Look at this. I would say that's, you know, if Lily came to me uh, with this painting, I would, I would be very, I would be very complimentary, you know? <laughs> it's not, it's not bad. Right? Yeah. Well. What? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You don't sound like you're being very honest. That's okay. You don't have to be honest with me. <laughs> Any idea what I'm up to now? Uh, no. Come I on! <laughs> <clears throat> red and green. Don't make red and green circles. Okay. Uh, red and green and blue. Alpha is going to be 1.0. All right. Okay, so I've got these variables called red and green and blue, and I'm setting them to these random things. Mm. Check it out. Check it out. Nice. <laughs> you like that? You like that? So in the course that you taught, it was a 
college level course. Is that, mm, is that true? Yeah, technically. Yeah. Um, what kind of grade? What kind of grade would uh, do you think you would give to our painter? We didn't have computers back then. Right, right, right. So one of your students shows up and he paints this and he's like, oh, you, you don't like that one here. Here, let me show you a different one. And then he paints this. Actually, here, let's increase this number from 10 to 1,000. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> get ready for this. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> Isn't that nice? Okay, it's not so nice. All right. I'll concede. It's not so nice. It is interesting. It is very, what we'd call random. Uh, but it's 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 a little random. And although, you know, random is creative, you also need some kind of uh, editing process, right? Okay. Editing. So you don't want to throw down just any old circle. You want to choose your circles well right okay does that make sense does that seem reasonable <laughs> i guess no it doesn't make sense you just you like well if i mean if you like this one i could print this up and send it to you well i've seen lots of art that's way worse than this. <laughs> and people people made just decisions to do to <laughs> that resulted in that so i i'm not sure, exactly sure what you're saying but Okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. And I understand you. You also are. Uh, you don't want to hurt my feelings and say that this is hideous. So, uh, it's 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 fine. I understand that this is hideous. In fact, I think what we should do is we should. I think we should should do some comparisons. <laughs> All right. Well, Google says these are great paintings. Uh, <laughs> last time I Googled, I found this really cool painting of uh, Michael Jackson. Uh, no, it wasn't f great paintings. It was famous paintings. <laughs> was it? Ah, see, these are famous paintings, not great paintings. So, I mean, I think that's Michael Jackson down there. Oh, there's Homer. See these? Oh, yeah. <laughs> these are these are great. Uh, okay, these are famous paintings. Uh, <laughs> but when I compare them to our painter's painting, uh, I see, I, I uh, yeah, I, there's there's a definite difference. Um, I'm not quite as a programmer. I'm not quite sure I can put my finger on what it is. Uh, uh, but as a programmer, I think I can solve it, right? Um, and I'm going to do that by dragging the Mona Lisa to my desktop. And then I'm going to drag her into our application. And I'm going to change her name because I'm not going to type that out every time. I'm just going to call her Mona.jpg. Is that what she is? She's a JPEG? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Um... And I'm going to ask our painter to load her. Let's call her uh, lowercase Mona. Because most of the times your variables you want to start with lowercase. I don't know why. And I'm going to say Mona equals UI image, image named uh, Mona.jpg. All right, let's load her up. Okay. strings need to have special symbols in them in this language um, alrighty let's turn this back down to 10 and then I'm gonna say Mona no lowercase Mona Mona What do, you, what, do you, what do you think of this? <laughs> it's kind of nice, huh? It's good. Yeah. It's good, huh? He's getting better. I mean, objectively, he is... Hmm, maybe. Maybe he's not objectively better. Uh, 
He's kind of doing a Banksy thing or something. Right, right. Um, okay, so I think what we should do now is uh, give him some honest artificial intelligence. Uh, before we do that, though, I want to make one change to him. Um, right now, he's uh, he draws these ten circles, and then he stops. Mm -hmm. I want him to continually draw circles. Uh, so... Uh, if I turn this number up to a thousand, if I turn this number up to like a hundred thousand, right, and I ran the program, uh, what would happen is it would freeze while it, uh, okay, so let me turn it up to a million. The program freezes while it draws all those circles and I don't see anything. So what I want to do is I want to modify it so I can see the circles as he's drawing them. And that doesn't take much work. Uh, let's see. See, it's still running over here. It hasn't finished the million circles. Hmm. And let me try to remember how to do that. I think that's just a matter of moving this guy down and moving these guys up. And uh, canvas view dot image and drawing that in first. Okay, so I've modified my thing so that it will work. Let me turn this back down to one, uh, 10. Um, but when I call it up here, before I would say just go paint, do the paint thing. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to change it so that it doesn't just go do the paint thing. I'm going to set up a timer. Uh, scheduled timer with interval. So that it will go paint every, and then I'm going to type in one hundredth of a second. Target self, selector, uh, our paint function, um, user info nil, and repeats. Yes. Okay. So all that all that's going to do is it's going to we're going to be able to see him painting. Oops. That's not what I wanted at all. I want it to be piling up. I want those circles to pile up on each other. There we go. Okay. So I want to be able to watch his progress as he makes progress. And so now we can see him while he's painting. So let's get back to what I was talking about earlier. Uh, the editing, right? Um, I want him to choose these circles in not such a random way. Okay. Okay. Um, now what I could do is I could have him look up on the Mona Lisa painting what color should be there and I could have him like analyze the Mona Lisa painting and say so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get him to sort of do the Mona Lisa painting um, with these circles uh, but I'm going to do it in sort of what I would call an ab a more abstract way um, and use a technique from artificial intelligence so what I'm going to have him do is this. Okay, you ready? Okay, yeah. Focus, focus. Describe the algorithm. He's going to draw some circles, okay? Or he's going to have his canvas, right? And he's going to, he's going to temporarily put a circle down on the canvas, okay? He's then going to look at his canvas and compare it to the Mona Lisa, Okay. Okay. If that circle makes his painting look more like the Mona Lisa, he's going to keep it. If it makes his painting look less like the Mona Lisa, he's going to take it away and choose a different circle. Hmm. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the only question we have is, what does this mean more like the Mona Lisa or less like the Mona Lisa? Right. Uh, uh, I'm just going to use the sort of dumbest idea I can, right? Uh, what I want to do here is I want to I try to create the simplest sort of uh, algorithm I can. Um, so I'm going to define more and less by the simple process of comparing their pixels. So each painting has this grid work of pixels and each pixel has an RGB. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the corresponding pixels from the two images, and I'm going to look at the red, the green, and the blue, and whatever numbers those are, I'm just going to subtract them from each other, right? Um, so if they're exactly the same value, which is the perfect value, which is the, you know, the, the value for the Mona Lisa, that'll be zero. It'll be like, you know, whatever it's supposed to be, like 10. It'll be 10 minus 10. Uh, but if it's not the perfect value, if it's a 5, it's going to be 10 minus 5, and that 5 is going to be like how wrong it is. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to do that for all the pixels and add up all that wrongness. Okay? <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. From a high level? Kind of? Kind yeah. of? Kind of. All right. Uh... Well, I mean, it doesn't, the question is, does it, uh, you know, does, it's not a question of, do you think it's going to work? It's a question of, do you, does, you know, does, is what I'm describing understandable? Not understandable? No? Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I understand. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to f declare this variable called total difference. I'm going to start with it equal to zero. Uh, um, and then I'm going to copy and paste this code because this is kind of tedious to type out. And all it does is let me get access to those red, green, and blue values for the images. Um, unfortunately, uh, Objective C here makes this process uh, super tedious, like super tedious. If you thought this stuff before it was tedious, this is. Um, can you see this code? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it involves pointers and extracting data and stuff. And then once we're done with it, we've got to release that stuff that we just created. Uh, but when we're done, we're going to return the total difference. Now, the only thing left for us to do here is uh, to compare those pixels. Um, so I will write that code by hand. And all, all it is is... Uh, looping over all of the pixels. Uh, what do I want to do? Get uh, data, data length, data, data get CG data, CF data. Sorry. Isn't programming fun? <laughs> Okay, so this is going to loop. It's like our loop before, but it's going to loop over all the pixels. And I'm going to say pixel 1 is equal to the data pointer from... Okay, so the pixel from the first image, pixel 2 is the data pixel from the second image. And for this Total difference. Oh no, uh, this. And I'm gonna subtract the two. Is that what I want to do? Yes, 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 yes. And then total difference equals itself plus this difference. Okay. Um. Okay. So this is the code for comparing how different two pictures are. And it does what I was describing uh, before. It loops over all the pixels. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean loops over all the pixels? Oh, sorry. Loops over the pixels. Well, I mean... It goes through... So looping in programming is when something, when something uh, gets done over and over again. So oh, it's okay. like the code goes in a, like a loop is what it's called. And it breaks out of it eventually. Or it doesn't, and then it's 
called an infinite loop, and it crashes. But what I mean by it loops over all the pixels, yes, yeah, sorry, uh, is that it uh, it does this one time for every pixel in the image. Okay. Does that answer your question? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh... okay. Um, so for every pixel in the image. But so when the, your painter puts down one of his uh, ovals, right, um, and then goes to see, you know, make the comparison right. between what he's created in the painting, right, of the Mona Lisa, right, he's not comparing his giant oval to one single pixel on the Mona Lisa, is he? No, 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 no. He's care. He uh, he's comparing his entire picture, uh, which contains an oval, uh, and then he's comparing each of his pixels uh, with the corresponding pixel in the Mona Lisa. So he's gonna. S uh, I wish I could show you. Okay. I wish I could gesture. <laughs> um, I can't gesture. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, he's going to. So he's going to start in the upper left-hand corner of the uh, of his oval picture, and simultaneously he's going to start in the upper left-hand corner of the Mona Lisa, and he's going to compare the colors of those two pixels, mm -hmm. and then he's going to step to the next pixel in each of the pictures and compare those two pixels, and step to the next pixel and compare those two colors, and then he's going to uh, take the total. He's going to add up the color differences for all of the pixels. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> no? Yeah, well... I don't... It's going to be a gigantic number, which makes no... It seemingly makes no sense, right? It's just this very abstract number that talks about the difference between these two pictures, which intuitively is sort of meaningless. So if you if it feels to you like it's meaningless, you're right. It is meaningless. Uh, the only thing is is that as if his picture happens to be a lot like the Mona Lisa, that number will be smaller. Okay. Um, and that's all we care about is that if that number gets smaller, then he can edit. Uh, so let's put that editing in now. Uh, we haven't done that yet. Float. So he's going to keep refining and refining and zeroing in on... Yes, that is exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> okay. So, actually, let's call that best difference. No, let's not call it that. Okay. <laughs> what, do you, what should we call our variables? I don't know. Uh, okay, so here's where we, this is where we get the image of his current canvas. Oops, hey, hey, that's not where I wanted to type. And this difference is equal to self uh, difference between two images. And we're going to say this image and Mona. All right. And if this difference is less than what he had before, uh, if his new painting has improved, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to say, uh, okay, keep this painting and keep that score. Otherwise, he won't keep the painting, and it'll get thrown away. Right. Okay. Let's see if this even runs. Okay. The first thing to notice is that he's drawing much more slowly now. Um, because only... Right. He's discarding choices. Right. Most of his choices are bad, because they're totally random. So, like, a fluorescent green circle... Uh, back when the painting was all white, that would have been maybe an okay choice. But if it's anywhere close to, you know, the Mona Lisa, 
the fluorescent green circles just aren't going to survive. They're going to get tossed. They're going to get edited. Mm. Um, so what I'm seeing is the color palette is converging towards the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I mean, you can see this, right? Yeah. The Mona Lisa is appearing from the random circles. All right. So what do you think now? That's pretty cool. What kind of grade, though? <laughs> yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're almost out of time. Oh. Uh, we're supposed to do this for an hour. Uh, so, yeah, this is... Th that was the big reveal. Look, it's the Mona Lisa. He's making the Mona Lisa. Just yeah. with random circles. Carefully chosen random circles, I should say. That's pretty cool. Um... Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> I'm gonna let you escape now. Uh, but I will tell you about uh, the well. Okay, so uh, as a part of this whole project, I put all of my code out in the public domain, so you could download this and work on it yourself. Wouldn't that be great? Because <laughs> uh, back when I was a kid. Um, I know I was nerdier than most, uh, but we had these magazines which had computer programs in them, and I would type them in, not having any idea how it all worked. It was like all gobbledygook, but then this game would come out of it, and then I would like poke different parts of the code to see how it would change things, and that was a big part of my early learning process. Huh. Um, but ideas for going forward... Uh, the fact that we chose the Mona Lisa obviously was arbitrary, um, but the fact that we chose a fixed image is arbitrary too. It would take only like three lines of code to change this to start reading from the camera, right? And if we could speed up his drawing, then he would do a you know a, a circle painting of anything that was in front of the camera on your phone. Right. Uh, and then as you moved, he would update his painting to, to reflect your movements. And that's, that's, that's cool. Um, uh, it's kind of, it's hard for me to show because, uh, the simulator in Xcode doesn't have a camera. So I would like actually have to put, get, a in order to demonstrate that to you, I'd have to get an actual camera and record my phone and it's just too much. Uh, um, the other okay. thing I've done, which I particularly like, is that uh, I have this notion that when computers paint, they don't paint with uh, circles. They paint with glyphs. Like, have you ever seen The Matrix? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, I replaced the circles with randomly chosen letters from fonts. And that's that's a cool thing, too. Is, mm. uh, then, at the end of it, you get a Mona Lisa that is created from the alphabet. Uh, you know, carefully chosen okay. colors for the alphabet. Cause, so that's that's cool. And it takes a while for it to converge. Uh, so, I forget, you actually use the word converge. That is the word that is used in artificial intelligence. Is your... You, your algorithm uh, converges on a solution. And the convergence here is pretty slow. Like, I mean, it's cool to watch. Uh, yeah. Uh, but there are things you can do. You can make it smarter, basically. Like, he could be choosing his colors from the palette uh, mm -hmm. of the painting. Or mm -hmm. he could be analyzing it in some way to get, like, the, the, the directions of the basic, you know, shapes. Uh uh, so the, the convergence could be made faster, but I like the simplicity of this, you know. It, yeah, that's it's more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Somehow. Yeah, no, I I agree, I agree. Uh, and that's 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 a fundamental concept in computer science too. Uh, elegance, the you know, the usually the shortest thing that does the job is the best. This you know. This yeah, it, well, from an artist standpoint too, for me, anyways. It, right. It has more, uh, I don't know, 
it's more provocative. It has more resonance to that. Yeah. To it, it's more mesmerizing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Actually, okay. So there's another idea. Um, I wanted. So I've been thinking about this as I've been uh, working through this project a lot. Um, there's another change that you can do to this to make it more interesting, although it's hard to see visually. And that is, I want to capture. Right now, he's still. Right now, he's you know he's generating random circles. Uh, it's still very random, you know. He he chooses circles that gets him closer to the solution, but it still feels very random. Uh, I changed it so that he would choose he would uh, go through and find a hundred circles that uh, took it took the painting to the next step but only use the one that was the best. So he would, when he's putting these circles down, he would evaluate not the first one that works, but the best of a hundred that works. And then I was trying to capture this idea of intentionality. So the circle that causes the best, the greatest improvement to the painting at that time. Does that make sense? Kind of, yeah. kind of. Yeah. So anyway, when when I put that in with the with the letters algorithm, what would happen is uh, uh, he would use, or we could do it with the circles too. He would choose. He would typically th the circles that caused the biggest improvement would be the biggest circles. So he would sort of uh, instead of you know putting down a bunch mm -hmm. of little circles to sort of fill it, he would like get her shape relatively quickly mm -hmm. um, because the circles would kind of match her shape better and and that's because uh, that's because he was only taking the best of the circles right um, anyway that was that was uh, so that's a that's more of like a, a short the kind of shortcut that any human being would right. make right Right. And so it would be closer in terms of emulating what people do right. with pigment and paint on an actual canvas, but I don't know if it oh, really? would be more interesting necessarily. Oh. oh. Because there's something, like you said, about the, I don't know, the simpler right. rules. Yeah, 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 I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, yeah. That's just... Well, I'll. Uh, I've got that code sitting somewhere. I'll run it and send it to you, and I'll let you decide. I couldn't, honestly, conceptually, I came up with this, but I couldn't visually see much of a difference other than early on he used bigger shapes. Um, mm. uh, there's no there. He had, and then he typically would avoid smaller shapes because. As long as, you know, it tends to be the, honestly, it tends to be the biggest one that works, uh, usually. Anyway, um, so that's, that's, that's the end of my show. That's pretty awesome. Yeah? You're great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being so supportive. I appreciate it. Um, I really like this. I really enjoy sort of presenting this stuff well it, it is it's amazing how i mean yeah in the beginning all that i mean sure the boilerplate right you know work is uh, uh but even that is not as uh, it seems to go pretty fast to me i'm kind of amazed oh really uh yeah and then huh. i mean just to get it all set up yeah and then there's this all there's always this wonderful payoff that uh, always, I mean, in the, <laughs> that's been my experience with you since I've known you. Yeah. It, it always transcends your expectations. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, so this simple thing that you did, you know, uh, with relatively simple group of rules, uh, yields this really, you know, fantastic uh, and uh, powerful and um, surprising yeah. uh, result. It's really fun, really, really fun. Well, 
thank you. Thank you. Cause that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and, uh, I've, I've run through this with a bunch of people now. And honestly, I would say not everyone gets it. Uh, so thank you. I'm glad someone gets it. Um, no, I, I really, I, I, I really think it's a great, a great thing. And if I had seen, if I'd been exposed to things like this or, uh, you know, we, 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 we had uh, different upbringings as kids, but, and I wasn't, I had a few nerdy friends, but there, I was also, I don't know, maybe, you know, born a little earlier. Yeah. And yeah. uh, thus wasn't ex- exposed to right. that kind of cutting edge, um, right. like that magazine that you right. mentioned, for instance. Right. You know, right. that could have been something that my friends and I glommed onto, right? But didn't, and I, you know, I'd never heard of anything like that until you just mentioned. Oh, it. really? Uh, oh yeah. my God! <laughs> there were but, so many of those. But I mean, that's what I. That's just imagining that, though. That's why I think that these these illustrations that you're you know, putting out there are so great uh, because even, even, even since that time, you know, going through the whole uh, computer revolution, yeah. um, I've, I've never witnessed, you just don't see stuff like this, you know, yeah. even as an artist, it, yeah. it just doesn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. it's great to sort of, that you're, you're kind of, you know, providing, uh, examples like this that are going to bridge that gap for yeah. a lot of people, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, young people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is the stuff. You know, going back to boilerplate, this is this is why I enjoyed grad school, is because when you can see through the boilerplate, this is the stuff you see, and computer science is full of crazy neat stuff like this. You just need to, I guess, what I'm doing is distilling it. You know. Uh, I distilled this cool concept in artificial intelligence down to an hour uh, and uh, a visually interesting yeah. Yeah. Uh, thing. Okay, I've got to go. All right. okay. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much. You Thank you. I appreciate it. It was fun. You were right. Okay, good. Okay. Take care, man. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. This programming is made possible through the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.